Hi, my name is Reagan, and I currently live in the San Francisco Bay on a 40-foot plywood catamaran um, that I bought for $1. So this video is my sailing story, how I got to this point, and a little tour of the before of the boat. Obviously, she needs a lot of work, but anyways, let's get into it. My sailing journey started at age 16 while I was on a biology club trip to the Bahamas. On our day off of helping at the research center, we took out Hobie cats and I fell in love. It wasn't until a couple years later when I was living in New York and I started to learn about alternative living and slow travel that I realized you could live on sailboats and that's when the dream started. So as soon as I realized that you could live on a boat, I was just like absolutely obsessed. Every single decision that I made was pushing myself to get to this point where I could live and work slowly as I travel. I was on cruiser's forum every single night just reading watching youtube videos and just soaking everything in for like eight years and it got to a point in 2020 where i was in negotiations on a boat in martinique but it fell through um and then covid happened and i ended up saving for more and then a couple years later is when i finally was like okay like maybe i should start dipping my toes in again and i put in for an auction. I'm about to bid on the boat. I've been working on this for so long and it's just like weird. I felt like this could be it. It probably won't be it. Didn't end up getting the boat. While the auction didn't work out in my favor, I had still been looking online and I found a trimaran that was for sale in New Jersey that I wanted to go take a look at. So in December, I flew north to go check it out. I made it to New York last night, currently in New Jersey. We're looking at a trimaran. We'll see how it goes. As soon as I stepped onto the trimaran, I knew it was a pass. The boat was beyond repair and the entire deck was soft. So I headed back home to Georgia without a boat, but with an idea of the change that I needed to make next. So today is the day that I'm selling my couch. That couch was like one of the first big purchases I made for myself. I know it's just a couch, but to me it just like signifies like making the first step towards my new life as a sailor. I've been going through my closet. It's ridiculous and I'm very overwhelmed. It's just overwhelming and it's hard and it's just sad like saying goodbye to people because I know I'll be back but like they don't necessarily feel like I will be. 24 hours later. And just like that, after all the pain, I was back on the water with Captain Tommy on Little Martha headed south down to the Bahamas. And our boat's still floating. The Bahamas are absolutely stunning, culturally and environmentally. And I was so grateful to be back in the place where I learned how to sail all these years ago. I was especially grateful for all of my experience at the helm. It had been a while since I had gone sailing and spending 40 days in total cruising the Bahamas was exactly what I needed. For eight years, I was questioning about my dream and my abilities in general. And for the first time, the only question on my mind was what boat would I get? I wanted a boat that was simple, that made me feel open and free and connected. And I had an idea about what that was. So when I said goodbye to Tommy, I headed straight for a boatyard in St. Augustine to visit my friend Kiana where she was working on the refit of her boat, Maranoka. Maranoka is a 40 foot warm catamaran that she's been refitting for the past year. I'd been a couple times to help her and especially after this Bahamas trip, I knew it was exactly what I needed. So when I got a Facebook message while I was there saying that there was one that was possibly for sale in California, I took the next flight that I could get and headed across the country to go and take a look at it. In San Francisco, I'm going to go survey a boat that I really think could possibly be my boat. Well, I'm on the boat for the first time and it definitely needs a lot of work. Um, I like it though. Buying a boat is no joke, especially when it's a project. So I made sure to bring my survey notebook and look through every little corner of the boat that I could possibly think of. This is the first time that I've gotten a look inside the starboard hull and as you can tell there is rot all the way on the side. Not good. Alright, so just for size reference, I'm 5'3 with some heels on. So maybe like 5'6 is the height. 5'7. So 
plenty of room to maneuver. This would be like your living area. I like it. Steps are very steep, so that would be something to think about with Ozzy. The aft cabin that's under the cockpit is just storage right now, which I kind of like. Oh my god, no, it's not. There's a toilet right there. It's a bathroom! What? Okay, I need to check that out still. The four cabins, you could sleep too, but it would be tight. Um, it's the same over on the other side, and I'll show you guys that. I'm in the port hall, which is the galley with the two berths in it. So here's a little tour. Come down the steps, and then you have your oven, stove, water in the bilge that would need to be pumped out. You have salt water and fresh water foot pumps. Um, this, this flips down and is like a little preparing station. You have this aft cabin, or sorry, forward cabin, and then you turn around, and over here, is another cabin that looks like it has like two beds in it which is very interesting i just found the helm wheel the actual one i there's one that's on top i'll show it to you it's atrocious but this is gorgeous so this is the helm station so you have your throttle here and then your wheel will go here this is the wheel that i thought came with it it's bottom part so when you open up here there's the engine and eggs. As far as deck space, you have two areas up in front. You have the two masts. More space here. This is the your cockpit area again. All of the beds will be replaced. Terrible, disgusting looking working table that would have to go. We have a whole lot of fun with this. And you flew out here just to see this? Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. After a thorough look around, I knew that this was a boat for me. I spent the entire next day touring San Francisco and meeting new people. And then after a delayed flight home, I knew it was about time to make an offer. So at this point I knew like I was absolutely in love, um, but the boat needed so much work. So I called the owner who is now actually my partner in the boat, um, at least until the project is done. Um, but I called him and I said, look, I love this boat. I want it to be taken care of. I want it to be sailed. And, you know, I can't offer much because I know I'm going to be spending on uh, all of the repairs. And every dollar that I give to you is a dollar that isn't going back into the boat. And that's how I explained it. And he was very understanding and said, he really liked me and wanted me to have the boat, but he needed to run it by a few people. So I was put into a little waiting period. I think I'm getting the boat. I think I'm gonna get the boat. I'm waiting to hear from the owner of the boat to see if I got it. And I'm feeling very, very nervous. So today is May 10th. 2022 and today I found out that I'm going to be a boat owner. As you can imagine the phone call went extraordinarily well and I ended up getting the boat. It took me roughly a month to get all of my affairs in order and drive across the country with my aunt and my cousin who were so kind to do that and make it over here and we signed paperwork and got everything in order once I met with the owner and here I am across the country, the owner of a boat that needs a lot of work and I can't wait to share my journey with you guys. So thank you so much and stay tuned. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a like and subscribe. If you're interested in helping out the journey a little bit more, head over to shesailsolo.com for links to my Patreon as well as my yoga classes. Until next time, fair winds and happy sailing.